Hey everyone, my name is Sinadel and welcome back to this Minimator tutorial series. In the previous episode we have been talking about some very basic things about keyframes, transitions and timing, and we put an example of that into a moving ball. And this episode is a continuation of it where we'll be applying these basic fundamentals to an actual character. And to start off with we will learn how to create a walk cycle, which FYI is a pain in the butt for a lot of animators to make. Just kill me now. One of the simplest ways of animating legs in Minimator is by creating two keyframes, selecting the first keyframe and choosing to automatically create a walk cycle with an option in the bottom left corner of the screen. But that's boring. That method is for people who can't be bothered to actually animate something from scratch. That's why I'm going to teach you how to create one yourself, like every animator should. A lot of Minimator users like to animate the legs first and then move the character in response to where the legs land. I know some names who like to do this, but in the animation industry that's typically a huge no-no. The way it should be done and also the way that I do it is the keyframes should be placed first to figure out how long it will take to move from point A to point B, and then the actual walk cycle would be created. This is for one particular reason. Remember when I was talking in the previous episode about timing? Figuring out what kind of walk you want should come first, whether it's a slow sad walk, a neutral stroll or an energetic sprint. Once you have decided, you can figure out how long the character will take to go from point A to point B. From there, you can start working on the legs. This is very commonly used in the industry, and this is called rough animation, where they figure out everything the character will do first before working on all the in-betweens. People may complain that it kind of makes the character look like it's gliding on its two feet, but that may be because they haven't animated the feet right. You know how in the real world, the way people walk is they would have one step after another while the other stays behind before taking another step, right? Note that in every single step, the foot that stays behind should stay planted in exactly the same place while the other foot takes a step before the behind foot leaves the ground for another step. A common mistake is people accidentally have that back foot out position from where it was when it landed either behind a little bit or a little bit too forward, probably because they are just winging it as they go. So to keep that foot at the right place without adjusting the point A to B keyframes of the whole character, I usually put my finger on the screen for where that foot lands and then I would position that foot for where it should be when the other foot takes a step forward. I know it's not good for my monitor to put greasy fingers on my screen, but whatever, shut up. The character's walking speed and how far away the feet go behind and in front of him can depend on how soon the character takes a step after the other, which will influence what kind of walk it is. If you struggle at trying to master this, don't worry, a lot of people do, and myself included. Walk cycles are one of the hardest things to animate. It may take a lot of fiddling to do, and you'll only get better if you practice. In fact, I'd imagine you would have to do a lot of fiddling anyway. As of starting and ending a walk, this method I talked about can still apply by having one step forward and making sure the behind foot stays in place. Just make sure the start doesn't look faster than the actual speed of a walk when it is accelerating. Same thing with the end of a walk, but backwards. Also remember to animate the arms too. They should swing a bit to emphasize the physicality of a walk. The direction the arms swing should be the opposite direction of the legs and then backwards for the next step if it takes. Maybe it's some very slight spin of the torso too to add more variation. There are different ways we can change this up a bit to make this walk cycle more interesting, but right now I want to talk some more things about animation techniques. One of the best habits a good animator should have is to study acting in real life motion. This is so we can adapt it to our own creations and manipulate it in our own way to achieve lifelike physicality. In fact, performing the action yourself is a really good way for you to understand how the action and how it should be performed by the character so you can have a reference to work from. There are a lot of animators and animation shooters out there who do this. Let's talk a bit more about rough animation. So let's make another short animation and this time have a reference to work from involving an acting performance. So like I said before, rough animation is where basic movements of an action are placed first before detail is applied. Let's work from this reference. So instead of going straight ahead animating the whole thing thinking we can just do it from one single look, let's play some keyframes to show where the body moves around first before doing everything else. Now let's play some keyframes to show where each limb goes and time it right so it's in sync with the action. Do not worry a single thing about detail and transitioning during this point, just get the proportions right. Now let's quickly have a look at it so far. The timing of when the limbs move and where it goes seems to be in sync with the action. Now this is the point where we can smooth in everything else so it looks more pleasing to the eye and doesn't look very mechanical. At this stage you can keep using your reference if you would like to, or you can just leave it be if you think you know what you're doing. Now that's finished, let's give it one last glance. Yep, that looks pretty good, I think we can call that finished. Using reference for animating and action is good to use for some movements and acting for the most part. You don't have to use reference 100% of the time if you think you can make the rough animation pretty well, but having something you can base your action off of is a good place to start. Finally, I think we can go back to our walk cycle we made earlier. So what we have created seems to be a pretty neutral feeling walk animation. What if a character was feeling something different and we wanted to get a message across to the viewers? Is it too late to fix it? No, you can go back to an animation you finished and fix it anytime you want. 
that's what we're gonna do. What if a character is sad or maybe tired? Let's time it right so it takes longer to get to point B by stretching out the keyframes more. Maybe let's make the torso, arms and head slaps just so it doesn't have the energy or not in the mood to do anything. Let's animate some slight movement in them too in response to each step so it doesn't look very stale. Next let's make him look anxious. Let's speed it up a bit and have his torso tilted back slightly with his arms shaking in front of him to show that. Let's also make him look back and forth to show his fears making him more alert of his surroundings. You see, the timing of when an action start and finish can say a lot about the animation itself. Staging also plays a big role too, for example making the characters lower or raise their arms and torso in response to their emotions. This way the viewers know and feel that. That pretty much cleared up everything I want to talk about in this video. I hope this video has given you a pretty decent crash course in animation techniques for improving your animation skills yourself. If there's anything in this episode that left you confused about animating one of these cubicle dudes, you can leave a question in the comments below and I'll either get to it as soon as possible or put it in the potential Q&A video at the end of the series. Just remember that you can't take advice from one single joke on the internet making videos without playing it yourself. Try and practice yourself and develop a style of your own. Until then, I'll see you all in the next video. Catch you all later, take care.